Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again uh, with another exercise in Perseverance Brings Success. And so I'm going to continue to read Poison Power, the case against nuclear power reactors uh, or nuclear power plants by uh, Dr. John Goffman and Dr. Arthur Tamplin. This was written in 1971, I think it said, and we are on page 181. On the third paragraph down, and the sub, the chapter is called Nuclear Electricity and the Citizens' Rights. <clears throat> but in dealing with the small community located in a major metropolitan center, a workable promotion scheme is available to the electric utility industry, along with a probable absence of the sophisticated knowledge of real hazards. Hmm. This promotional scheme deserves careful examination since it is used repeatedly to take advantage of millions of citizens. A small community is chosen, generally less than 20,000 population, comes 20 to 40 miles from a major pop pop metropolitan population center. Of course, Anyone even mildly conversant with nuclear accident hazards realizes that a major nuclear plant accident that close can easily endanger a million or more residents in a major metropolitan area through the spread of radioactive poisons. But that doesn't matter because they're just ignoring the poisons. Who cares? <clears throat> The softening up begins with an advance guard of utility propagandists whose job it is to convince the officials of the small community and its chamber of commerce that jobs will be created. That's what they keep telling us, in fact. The odor of money flowing into the community works magic, and the citizens of a small community are mesmerized by the prospect of a reduction in their taxes such taxes ostensibly to be paid instead by nuclear electric plant. These economic incentives are hard to resist. Such attractive lures are, are accompanied by the classic blandishment, nuclear power plants are good neighbors, a homespun slogan designed to make one almost expect the nuclear power plant to babysit, restore happiness to broken homes, and play pinochle with the old folks. In a recent examine, example of such blatant gimmickry, a group known as MEPP is perpetuating this scheme on the small community of Ipswich, Massachusetts. The major target for disenfranchise, disfranchisement is Boston. The MEPP group labeled itself to be dedicated to, quote, to conserve ecology, unquote. MEPP publishes a monthly entitled Public Island Sounding News, distributed without charge to the residents of Ipswich. The news presents a blissful description of nuclear electricity's wonders, dis dismissing at the same time any real considerations of the hazards such a plant might present. And the news proclaims in a full text page highlighted ad, tax base without nuclear plant, $66 per thousand. Tax base with nuclear plant, $24 per thousand. Thus, a set of economic enticements per per perpetrated upon a community of less than 20,000 residents plus a whitewash of nuclear hazards. A great city of millions can be placed in jeopardy without having any opportunity to participate in the decision. This obvious approach is used repeatedly throughout the country with minor variations. The net effect is that 90% of all U.S. citizens can be placed at risk, powerless to do anything about this anti-democratic procedure that somehow characterizes nuclear that somehow characterizes nuclear electricity promotion. Such publications as the Plum Island Sounding News are designated educational, so of course the taxpayer foots the bill for that too.
Wow. We must consider educational efforts practiced by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission in more detail. In a recent speech, <clears throat> Dr. Howard Brown, Assistant General Manager of the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, gave a talk entitled, The AEC Goes Public, A Case Study in Confrontation. <clears throat> Excuse me. A Case Study in Confrontation. The asterisk says, The AEC Goes Public, A Case Study in, in Confrontation. Howard C. Brown, Jr., delivered before the Atomic Industrial Forum, Forum's Topical Conference on Nuclear Public Information, Los Angeles, California, February 11, 1970, available through Atomic Industrial Forum, New York, New York. As everyone knows, the AEC has been spending taxpayer dollars to sell the public on the wonders of nuclear electricity for many years. While carefully glossing over any adverse information about the hazards of nuclear electricity generation, Mr. Brown starts out with a lament. We've had a public information program for 20 years, and a lot of effort has gone into it. For example, we put out something like 10,000 press releases. We've had a film library of some 11,000 prints. We put out some 50 annual and semi-annual reports. We've made hundreds of speeches over the years, held scores of news conferences, and have circumnavigated the globe many times over spreading the gospel of the peaceful Adam. Despite this, the message wasn't getting through. So last spring, the commission decided to take a more direct, more personalized approach. Holy fuck, I can't wait to hear what this is. Since last March... The commissioners and the staff have attended 39 public meetings on the environment, delivered some 22 speeches on the environment, and attended 10 congressional hearings and submitted over 300 pages of testimony. We've prepared 66 articles on environment-related matters, over 140,000 copies of our booklet entitled Nuclear Power in the Environment have been distributed. We have more than doubled our staff effort at headquarters in approximately 35 man years over to 70 man years, not counting regulatory activities. In spite of this massive infusion of taxpayer dollars into propaganda, the public resistance to nuclear electric power generation has grown remarkably. In fact, the more propaganda the AEC puts out, the more public indignation rises for obvious reasons. This is why they're not putting out any information. This is why they know that we're not going to fucking buy it. The public is far more intelligent than Mr. Brown realizes. Factoring the specter of a technology that can potentially eliminate the continued existence of all living things on Earth. That's where we're at now, folks. The public is indeed interested to hear about atomic power. But what they want is hard information, not the gospel of the peaceful atom. The AEC wants to provide information, that is, one-sided information. When a nuclear power plant is planned for a region, the AEC will gladly send speakers, all expenses paid by the ta U.S. taxpayer, to tell the residents of the area how perfectly safe nuclear electricity generation is. But if those same residents want speakers to discuss the potential hazards for nuclear power generation, they must locate these speakers themselves, and then they must pay for them out of their own funds. Is this what the AEC calls helping to present a balanced picture? If there is anything the AEC cannot handle, it is an honest, open forum discussion of the hazards of nuclear electricity generation. Operating within the safe confines of its own public relations circuses, the AEC fares very well. It can slander critics, preach the gospel, and whitewash all hazards. Recently, we determined to find out whether the Atomic Energy Commission could stand the light of scrutiny by a jury of unbiased scientists. The following challenge was issued January 28, 1970. 
a scientific challenge to the Atomic Energy Commission staff concerning the cancer plus leukemia risk for radiation. Quote, Chairman Hollyfield, we urge you to nominate a jury of eminent persons, physicists, chemists, biologists, physicians, Nobel Prize winners, or National Academy of Science members, or American Association for Advancement of Science members, none of whom have any atomic energy acts to grind. We urge you to serve as chairman of a debate. Dr. Tamplin and I will debate each and every facet of the evidence concerning the serious hazard of Federal Radiation Council guidelines against the entire AEC staff plus anyone they can get from their 19 odd laboratories singly, serially, or in any combination. With their 20 year background on this problem and their large staff to draw on, we should be razor sharp at a moment's notice. We are ready now. If there is any valid reason for questioning our submission to peers and for questioning our evidence, this eminent jury of peers will certainly determine so. If the debate before eminent peers is not held, held, then by default we think the entire country and world will know the answer without further question. In spite of numerous repeated offers to the AEC for such an open forum debate on these most crucial issues, the AEC remains in hiding, and yet education of the public is supposed to be a major obligation of the Atomic Energy Commission. Nuclear electricity, as can be seen from anything discussed here, is being promoted as an impressive disregard for humans, for citizens' rights. A total lack of candor characterizes proponents' presentation of the hazard considerations. Gimmicks are used to disenfranchise the citizens of major metropolitan centers. Citizens stand to lose their property without compensation in the event of nuclear accidents, assuming they are lucky enough to preserve their lives. I think I'll stop here. We're on a new chapter, chapter 8 the nuclear legacy, radioactive waste, and plutonium. Uh, this chapter is, I mean, can you tell you guys reading this book is making me increasingly agitated. This is not a game. And for the NRC to just blatantly, somebody on Facebook today asked me, posted a thing, uh, a picture by, I think the author's name was David Wolf. He was citing a scientific evidence paper saying there wasn't that much cesium in the salmon, so go ahead and eat the salmon. Well, nobody looks into the scientific evidence. That thing that they're putting around right now, they studied five fish, five fish, found low level of radiation in the five fish they tested. They didn't say they studied five random fish. They studied five fish. This is how the nuclear energy industry rolls. They will lie to us for profits no matter what, and they are killing our planet. And people need to take seriously. I apologize if I don't read well enough, but you know what? People can write, read these books, and I encourage people to go get these books. Read as much evidence as you can, real evidence, real scientific evidence. And you know what the reality is? Facts don't matter. The evidence doesn't matter. We can have all this information in our head and it really won't matter. These, I'm really trying to refrain from cussing these days because I've, I've had some comments on my YouTube channel that it offends some people. And I'm not here to offend people. So I'm going to try to keep my language clean. But it, it is outrageous. It's beyond outrageous. It's treason. It's a crime against humanity, and for any human who can turn their back on this, your complicity and your silence gives these people power. I'm going to end here. I'm going on 15 minutes. Ciao, you guys. Put your courage feet on. I guess I really need to start that painting so I can get some of this out of me. So I love all you guys, and thank you for uh, loving our planet. Ciao.